everybody. Welcome to the next episode of Bite Size Book Buzzes. I am Annie Mazes from Workwin Publishing, and I am joined today by Annalisa Sandstrom from Chronicle, Erica Melnichak from Penguin Random House, Margaret Coffey from Sourcebooks, and Michelle Leo from Simon & Schuster. Take it away, Annalisa. Thank you, Annie, and greetings from San Francisco. I'm Annalisa from Chronicle Books. Hello from me and from everyone at Chronicle Books. Uh, I want to introduce you to Family Field Trip by Erin Austin Abbott, which went on sale on April 7th. Erin was a travel nanny for the Flaming Lips and uh, went all over the world with them, educating their kids. And from that experience, she has written this awesome guide for activities that parents, educators, caretakers can do uh, with kids on the road. Things like, there are 75 plus activities, things to get kids to appreciate architecture, food, and nature. There's so many tips. Many of these activities can be done inside. Uh, One of the activities is writing, uh, drawing a map of your house or drawing a map of the, the block that you live in. There are things, if you're fortunate enough to have a backyard, you can do things like spotting birds nests or looking for different animal tracks. Uh, She talks about getting kids to appreciate food um, and different cultures by picking up something at a grocery store that you're unfamiliar with and trying that. Um, The principles in here are based on different educational philosophies like Waldorf and Montessori and forest teaching, which I had never heard of. so there are lots of great tips in here. There is an ebook available as well and an audio book. So thank you for considering this as you're working with patrons and customers who are looking for fun activities to do with kids. Over to you, Erica. Thank you, Annalisa. Thank you, Annie. Hi, everyone. I'm Erica Melnichok from the Penguin Random House Library Marketing Team. Book buzzing to you today from my home in Connecticut. You can visit our resources and contact us anytime on penguinrandomhouselibrary.com. I want to wish you all a happy National Poetry Month. And I'm here to say a special happy book birthday to John Kenny's latest poetry collection. On sale today, Love Poems for Anxious People. Available in hardcover, audio, and ebook editions. With the same brilliant wit and hilarious realism that made love poems for married people and love poems for people with children, of which I'm a huge fan, you can see where I've made notes, um, made them such hits, John Kenny is back with a brand new collection of poems, this time taking on one of the most common feelings in our day-to-day age, anxiety. Kenny covers it all from awkward social interactions and insomnia to nervous tics and writing and rewriting that email that keeps you up at night. And now I'd like to read um, one poem. Uh, This is my first ever poetry reading, so please bear with me. Here comes someone whose name I should know. We have met so many times, you and I, and yet I have no idea what your name is as I stand frozen, inane grin on my face. Do you have a name? Here you come smiling and calling my name, as well as the names of my wife, children, even my dog, Fortinbras, which I kind of can't believe you remember. My God, you're almost here, and I will need to introduce you to the person next to me, whose name may be Beth or Valentina, I'm not sure. Here's a quick thought, not about your name, but about the urge I have right now, just just start running. That would be a weird thing to do though, at a children's birthday party, but not as weird as I what I do, which is to stuff two cupcakes into my mouth, so as not to be able to speak, but then choke and spit them out onto the man whose name, it turns out, is Alan, which I now will never forget. Thank you, everybody. Take good care and happy reading. And I'm going to share my screen for just a moment so you see the eGalley, which I closed. So I will not be sharing my screen and I'll just be saying take good care and happy reading. And now on to Margaret. Thanks, Erica. That was lovely. Great poem for today. So I am Margaret Coffey and I am from Sourcebooks. I am in my living room in Chicago and I hope my dog doesn't make any noise to distract us. I wanna thank Annie for organizing our little soiree together. Um, It's so nice to see everybody again. For my bite-sized book bite, I wanna tell you about The Last Flight by Julie Clark, which will be coming out in June. Who doesn't wanna get away right now? Two women, two flights, one last chance to disappear. Claire Cook has a perfect life, 
married to the son of a political dynasty with a Manhattan townhouse and a staff of 10. Her surroundings are elegant, her days flawlessly choreographed, and her future auspicious. Her perfect husband has a temper that burns as bright as his promising political career, but what he doesn't know is that Claire has worked for months on a plan to vanish. A chance meeting in an airport bar brings her together with a woman whose circumstances seem equally dire. Together they make a last minute decision to switch tickets. Claire taking Eva's flight to Oakland and Eva traveling to Puerto Rico as Claire. They believe the swap will give each of them the head start they need to begin again somewhere far away. But when the flight to Puerto Rico goes down, Claire realizes it's no longer a head start, but a new life, if she can survive. For our sales conference, we're given 30 to 50 pages of the big upcoming books. This was the one title I had to track down and read the entire manuscript. I hope you'll enjoy it. If you'd like to read the book, it's available on Edelweiss and NetGalley. You can follow us on social media for all the latest things that we're doing. You can email me at margaret.coffee at sourcebooks.com, or you can visit our website, which is www.sourcebooks.com for book club guides, children's books, activity kits, and maybe you want to sign up for one of our newsletters. Stay healthy, take care, on to Michelle. Hey, Margaret, I'm going to interrupt for a second. Could you hold your book jacket up a little bit? So we can see the whole thing. Or is it totally? Yeah, sorry. No, it's fine. I would just love to see what it looks like so I can immediately download it. <laughs> awesome. Thank Wait, you. So where was it? Like down here? Michelle, it's going to be your turn next. You're good. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm coming to you from my home in New Jersey. My book for today is A Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. Megan Miranda is the New York Times bestselling author of All the Missing Girls, The Perfect Stranger, and The Last House Guest, which was a Reese Witherspoon book club pick. Everyone knows the story of the girl from Widow Hills. Arden Maynard was just a child when she was swept away while sleepwalking during a terrifying rainstorm and goes missing for days. Against all odds, she was found alive clinging to a storm drain. As soon as she was old enough, Arden changed her name and disappeared from the public eye. Now a young woman living hundreds of miles away, Arden goes by Olivia. She's managed to stay off the radar for the last few years until late one night, she sleepwalks again and jolts awake in her yard. At her feet is the corpse of a man she knows from her previous life as Arden Maynard. And now the girl from Widow Hills is about to become the center of the story once again in this propulsive page turner from suspense master Megan Miranda. The novel goes on sale June 23rd. The e-galley is available now on NetGalley and Edelweiss for you to read. So I encourage you to download it and vote for library reads before the May 1st deadline. Stay well and thank you for tuning in today. Thank you everybody. It's been so lovely to see all your faces and librarians. We hope that you have added some more books to your TBR pile. Tune in next week for our next Bite Size Book Buzz. Take care.